Today, freshmen and sixth graders in the district started the new school year. Their first day of school was designed to give them an extra day to connect and become familiar with their new school buildings. Earlier today, I caught up with RPS Superintendent Kent Pacal at John Adams Middle School as he shares his goals and plans for the new school year. We know the struggles that kids and teachers both faced when we had the pandemic. What were some of your biggest goals right off the bat that you knew you needed to do with your administration to get the kids ready to be back in person? You know, there's actually, you know, I spent the last 15 years actually in the world of research, and there's a lot of research that says there's two recipes kind of for failure. One is you're way too optimistic, and the other is you're way too pessimistic. If you're too pessimistic, you have no motivation to to work hard and try it. But if you're too optimistic, when you hit the first bump in the road, you, you freak out and you want to collapse. We know we have kids with some unfinished learning, mm -hmm. but we know how to teach and we know how to help them learn. So uh, we're realistic, but we're optimistic, uh, and we're going to have a good year. MCA test scores came back. Pandemic had a big part of that, too. Were there any concerns for you, and are, are there any new goals for you to make sure those test scores come up? Um, you know, test scores don't tell us everything, but they don't tell us nothing. Um, they are an important measure of how our system is doing, and they can be useful for an individual student. It's true that our outcomes in the most recent administration of our state tests, and actually also on some other indicators, um, are not where we need them to be and where I want them to be. I consider them the baseline for our strategic plan. Um, I am confident that two years from now, for sure, we'll be in a different place. One year's fast but I'm optimistic. Some of your strategic plan for the future of this district involves, you know, diversity, inclusivity, bringing more people of uh, color to, you know, into your staff. How do you plan to do that and why was that your, a goal for you? Um, we've already made significant progress on that at the, at the central level, the yeah. senior levels of the organization. That's important because first of all, talent comes in all colors, all genders, all life experiences. We are hiring very talented people full stop. Mm -hmm. That's the price of entry. I think in Rochester, we have a really unique opportunity not to make growing diversity a story of us and them, mm -hmm. or people fighting over a shrinking pie. Learning is not a limited commodity. Kids can learn at expansive levels. And so when we're investing in all kids, especially kids of color, kids from communities that often haven't been as welcomed or as successful in US schools, that does not mean that like white males like me are going to do worse. And I think we have a chance to get that right here in Rochester. Like you said, all these wonderful optimistic goals, but how do we achieve that when we're dealing with staffing shortages? It's a huge struggle. We are living in the state with the lowest unemployment in the United States and the lowest employment in American history, right here in Minnesota right now. Some places we've done really well. At John Adams uh, Middle School, where I'm standing with you right now, they are fully staffed. Everybody's here. Now that's a testament to the building leaders, but also what we've done at the district level. We have tried to be creative. We have not just waited for people to come to us. We've gone to fairs. We've gone to events. We have had bonuses. And we also know that in the end, people make decisions significantly, not only significantly based upon salary. And so we are really trying to make sure that in a town where there's this little clinic called Mayo and some other businesses that are doing very well too, we're offering competitive wages. But we also know that we have to have a place where not just our students, but our staff can be their full selves. And so that we've got uh, our educators, our paraprofessionals, our nutrition services people, our bus drivers, feeling like they are valued and supported in our organization. Well, you talked a little bit about behavior. Um, what were some of the things you guys were noticing right off the bat when kids were returning back to in-person that you want to kind of tackle uh, this year? This year, the first thing we are talking about is a sense of belonging and that all kids feel that they belong, they can be their best selves, we want them, and we have very high expe academic expectations for them. So that's the first piece. But then it also does come with very clear expectations for behavior. And I want both our students and our parents to know this, but especially our community to know this. We do have standards for behavior in Rochester Public Schools, and we hold students accountable. There's three things that, that, that kids really need to feel in my experience. They need to feel seen for who they are. They need to feel validated, like you're good for who you are. And they need to feel cared about, like you're not just a paycheck for me kind of a thing. So we're leading with those relationships, but then we're also establishing very clear expectations for behavior. And the cell phone uh, uh, guidelines are just one example of how we're putting in place those expectations. Is there anything you want to say to your students listening and to your staff listening uh, for this next school year from the superintendent? You know, I think that this is a school year where if I was going to give us one word, it's purpose. 
and it's for kids, what is your purpose? What is your purpose for learning? What do you want in your life? Maybe it's a job, maybe it's what you want to do for your family, maybe it's a lifestyle you want to live, maybe it's an income you want to learn. What you do in school is going to deeply affect your ability to realize that purpose for your life. And that might sound obvious, but for a lot of kids, they think, well, what do I do in seventh grade or tenth grade or fourth grade? It doesn't really affect my future. Well, those of us who've lived a bit know it really does. So purpose for kids, but also purpose for staff. Our work is so complex that it can, it can be easy to fall into just reacting. You're constantly reacting. And instead, we want to be purposeful with our teaching, with our leading, so that we actually have a vision for kids. And we're getting ahead of the, the problems and the opportunities before they get to us.